Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for more survivalists and continuing with the topic of the war in Ukraine. Man, I tried doing this video several times this week already. It always ends up like hour-long rant because there's so much going on. There's so much complexity and people don't have the patience for it anymore. Now, I kind of gave up and, and decided, you know what, I'm going to be doing a proper video about this. For people that want to watch it, stay with me and try to you know follow what I'm going through here. If not, go watch something else. Uh, but this is a, a situation that in many aspects, is, it's pretty black and white. You know, you, you have a country that's being destroyed, bombed to pieces. This is very black and white. This is very simple to understand. I mean, there's people that will deny absolutely everything. There's people that even believe that this is all just you know, uh, an act, that these are all a uh, crisis actors pretending to be attacked. There's people that truly believe this is like a an Alex Jones um, crisis actors thing going on and there's no war going on. There's people in Russia that believe there's not a war going on and that, as their dictator says, it's all just a, a, a special a operation, special military operation, but no war going on. Um, and you wonder how are people so easily fooled? Man, I was joking not long ago about flat earthers. Like, you know, what, what if there's thousands of flat earthers, you have to comprehend that there's people that will believe absolutely every, everything. In that same video, someone in the comments left me a, a link and said, Fernando, I know you think that flat earthers are, are nuts, but man, you go watch this video. I, I, I'm pretty sure the earth is flat. So there's people like that. They do exist. in. In times like these, it's very easy to be fooled by the propaganda on, on either side, both the propaganda coming from Vladimir Putin and the propaganda coming from the West, that it's not all that different uh, from the interests that, at the end of the day, Vladimir Putin has. This is why, partially, when you hear uh, several voices saying, oh, this is all blamed on the West, you know, a lot of it is. This is all to blame because of Joe Biden. And no, really, Joe Biden doesn't make any decisions. He, we, we all agreed long time ago that Joe Biden is a shell of a man. He just repeats what he's being told. Now, the handlers of Joe Biden, yes, they do have a, a lot to answer for, and they're responsible for all of this. Uh, but so is the rest of the West. So is the rest of of the so-called civilized world. Um, so on on certain things. This is all very black and white. People are having their country destroyed by an evil dictator. And it's not like Tucker Carlson says that, oh, Joe Biden tells me to hate Putin. No, uh, dude, you should hate Putin on your very own because he is a damn dictator and he's slaughtering people. Just like you hate people like Nicolás Maduro, just like I hate people like Cristina Kirchner that destroyed my country. And when I see the people in Russia uh, leaving Russia because of all of this, those that have uh, sense and uh, the vision to see where the country is going, and they've said, oh man, this is enough. I, I can't stay here anymore. I, I understand because I found myself in that exact same situation. Not leaving like a refugee like so many people unfortunately have to do in Ukraine, but leaving in my country has become something that is no longer viable uh, as a decent place to live in. Right. Many of these Russians are leaving Russia because they realize this has gone too far, this is too insane, and we're about to fall into some horrible, even worse dictatorship than it, what it used to be uh, all of these, these years with Vladimir Putin. Right. So uh, I get it. Uh, I, I understand it completely. This is very different from something like the people in Ukraine are seeing where your country is being destroyed by a foreign force. Your country is being destroyed on the inside and unfortunately there's a lot of fanatics that actually believe this is something good. So you look around you and say, okay, then I am the one that is different. I am the one that doesn't want to go along with this insanity anymore. I really have no place here anymore. As painful as that is, uh, you know, and having gone through that, I understand it completely. Now, I, I wish I'm completely wrong about all of this and that five, six months or five, six years from now, because this may go on for a very long time. I watched this video and, and the situation resolved itself in favor of the people of Ukraine. But the people in Ukraine are screwed, in my opinion, because 
they're not only fighting Russia, they're fighting the West as well. So even though you have very simple things like what's going on, you have a country that's being destroyed by Russia. Yes, but there's several actors involved here that have their own interests, actors in the West, that looked away when they saw this coming years ago. You know, they saw this coming years ago and did nothing, either because it was beneficial to their own interests, either because they couldn't be bothered with it, because, you know what, if, if Putin wants to take over Ukraine, so be it. Um, what you need to understand is that both the West United States, Europe abandoned Ukraine and the Ukrainian people even when they saw that Vladimir Putin was going after them. You know, I don't want to make the video terribly long, but um, here we have, a, 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 this is from the old fleeing family. This is from the Prime Minister of UK, Boris Johnson. Listen to what he says and let me comment a little bit on that later. Shelling of civilian humanitarian corridors, airstrikes on residential blocks. Is it not on your conscience every time you speak to President Zelensky and he asks you for that no-fly zone? It must... It is. How can you it's, and it's terrible. I've got to say, it's absolutely terrible. And uh, I've got a, a massive aberration for Volodymyr Zelensky. And I think any leader in his position would be saying exactly the same thing. They'd be saying, why can't you provide that air cover? Why can't you, as the West, uh, simply help to, to clear our skies of, of Russian planes and stop us being bombarded from the air, stop this, this evil going on in Europe? And, and you know, we've had some, some very frank conversations and ones in which, uh, which have been deeply but upsetting. You, you won't because do it. The well, difficulty is that, well, the difficulty is that uh, there is a there is a line uh, beyond which, uh, quite frankly, the the UK and NATO would be would be deemed to be in conflict, direct conflict so uh, no, with Russia. So no circumstances. And if they, if as you say, they could uh, drop chemical weapons, is that not the red light? Nothing. Well, is there nothing that could I, happen that might make you change your? Yeah, I know that you guys hate when, when I do this and cut it, but you need to understand, uh, read stuff like what you just saw there. Uh, when she's asking, he won't reply, but he already replied with his body when he did like, no, th there's nothing, there's nothing. And what he says now is just a politician talking, really doesn't matter. What you saw a second before, let me move that back. Nothing. Well, is there no You see that movement? He does it before. When he's talking the uk and nato would be would be deemed to be in conflict direct conflict so there's uh, no with russia so no circumstances and if they if as you say they could uh, drop chemical weapons is that not the red light nothing well is there nothing no no there is nothing now what he says doesn't really matter he already said it with his body language i want you guys to learn i've i've been living surrounded by scumbag politicians and scumbag people honestly very often my entire life uh, because you know in, in in south america and latin america you are used to you know having you know uh, crime scams uh, all of this stuff is you learn these things that could I, happen that might make you change your mind it's agonizing it's absolutely agonizing it's agonizing it's very painful our hearts bleed and i've had this conversation uh, at least a couple of times now with, with Velo. So he talks, he doesn't give a, an actual answer of no, there, there's nothing we could do. But as I was saying, he does it with his own body. And I, yes, guys, I'll say it for you. No, Fernando, we cannot cross that red line because the red line is that no fly zone means pilots from the NATO countries. And if they see a Russian, uh, they have to you know, shoot it down. And that would start World War III with a nuclear power. So they throw nukes, we throw nukes, and this will be the end of the world. It, this is um, the, the, the narrative that you have. Um, this is part of the propaganda as well. The idea that if there's a conflict, it would be the end of the world. So, okay, let's go with that. What you're saying is that you have nukes, they have nukes. But there, if there's a conflict, it, we would all lose because the world would be blown up. So we already roll over and surrender without giving a fight or even trying to do anything because fighting would be the end of the world. So 
we just give up? No, Fernando, you don't get it. This is something that would be worse for everyone because the world would explode. Um, Vladimir Putin is a pretty evil bastard. Uh, he is a dictator. He's not an idiot. Um, Vladimir Putin does not go around invading NATO countries because he knows that there would be a, a response from those countries. Vladimir Putin also understands that Ukraine was left to hang, was left there to, you know, on its own. That's why it was never in court. Look at all the things that you're being told all the time, but never actually happened. Look at the facts. Look what's real. Look what's actually real. What's data. What's actually real. And what's just, you know, saying what it would have happened if this had happened. And all of that bullshit means really nothing. Look at what actually happens. Has Ukraine joined NATO? No, it hasn't. Oh, but there were talks. There were talks of one day maybe joining. Yes, but it didn't. It, it, it didn't five years ago, ten years ago. They wanted to join, but they were never allowed to join. In the same way, they were not allowed to join the European Union, but specifically NATO, which would have given them uh, a, a protection, like the same protection that the other NATO countries have. Ukraine was not uh, allowed that benefit, that privilege. Russia is not attacking uh, Poland, it's probably not going to be doing that. They have uh, plenty of, of territory to, to pick and go after uh, rather than uh, getting involved with, with NATO. So, all, in spite of all of this, the, the threat, the, the, the thing about if this, just, yes, but it didn't happen. And it, NATO was clearly not looking to have Ukraine uh, allowed into the club. You know, if there's something you, you have to understand here is that these are several layers of things. These, th this didn't happen by accident. O on one hand, the United States has an industry that revolves around war. But more than around war, the real military-industrial complex of the United States revolves around military contracts, making weapons, and hopefully never having to actually use those weapons in real uh, conflicts that could mean uh, a significant uh, destruction for, for the country. So, you spend billions upon billions of dollars going after a, some dude in the middle of the desert with a damn cow and a bag of fertilizer and Intel says he's making bombs when he's actually... There was this guy, you know, there, there was, I don't know if you guys... There was this this uh, drone strike or on, a, on a... I think it was in Afghanistan or somewhere in the Middle East. That a guy that had bought a hundred kilograms of fertilizer, and of course the supposition was that he was going to be using those for for you know terrorist attacks. They apparently didn't bother checking that it was a farmer in the middle of a damn uh, farm, and that fertilizer was actually going to be used for what fertilizer is supposed to be used. So. You would think that would make any sense. No, they still dropped a, a, a missile on the guy, is spending more money than that man would have made in his entire life with that bomb. So this is basically what it revolves around. Not getting into fights with um, uh, uh, nations that are, are, are attacking others. Uh, or, or, you know, there's such a thing as a, as a just cause. There, there is such a, such a thing. In this case, uh, people fighting an attacker, an, an invader. Uh, this is one of those black and white cases. Yes, whatever you think, whatever you believe, you, you think this is all just uh, um, you know, Russia uh, being scared of NATO. Okay, at the end of the day, it's still Russia attacking Ukraine w without any actual real provocation other than what suppositions would lead, lead you to believe. But... What I see here is that it's not just that Ukraine is being attacked by one of the you know, largest military forces in the planet that it dwarfs them, really. They have no chance. I mean, they are resisting as best as they can, but as soon as they... And this is something that Russia also does. Russia bombs the crap out of anyone presenting any kind of resistance. So what's likely to happen, and I really hope I'm wrong, they're going to be leveling. This is also something that was being said in that link below. It's almost an hour long, but do watch it, okay? Um, there's a very good chance that they're going to be bombing the crap out, out of Ukraine. There's going to be nothing left. They're going to be leaving everything to turn into rubble, right? 
that's most likely the, the finesse that uh, the, the Russian military is capable, and that's the, 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 the evil that uh, Vladimir Putin is really truly capable of. He is capable of doing that. Now, uh, that doesn't mean he's stupid. He wouldn't have gone after Ukraine if he had joined NATO when they were trying to join NATO, right? They were left there to hang dry like uh, uh, Ben Shapiro says this clip right here the government then starts buying as many weapons as humanly possible to deter a future invasion by the Russians but why exactly would Zelensky trust NATO why, why would he trust the United States when for example the Pentagon yesterday nixed a plan to get MiGs to the Ukrainians and yeah, that was yesterday it's really amazing it's an amazing amazing thing so yesterday the Polish government said they sort of announced it just publicly because they figured that they were getting nowhere with the Americans. The Polish government wants to see Russia defeated in Ukraine because the minute that Russia wins Ukraine, suddenly there's now a border with, with Poland again. And so this is something the Polish don't want. So the Polish are like, okay, we want to get the MiGs in, but we can't get the MiGs in directly. We don't have the ability to do that. So what we would like to do is use the Ramstein base in Germany in order to ship the MiGs in, and then you are going to reimburse us for the cost of the planes. You're gonna bring us new planes. We'll take our old planes, we'll give them to Ukraine, we'll use Ramstein as sort of the thoroughfare, and then you get us new planes. And they announced this publicly because they wanna make clear, they wanna shame Joe Biden and the United States into going along with that deal. And the Pentagon nixed it. So if you're a Ukraine, why would you trust the United States? They won't even ship you the MiGs when the MiGs aren't even coming from you, they're coming from Poland. So it's not just about the no-fly zone. Oh, if we have the no-fly zone, um, and, and it's happened before. I mean, if you think that Vladimir Putin is going to be starting a, a war against the entire world because you kill a couple of his men, you don't follow the news much. You don't see how little Vladimir Putin cares about his own people. The amount of people that are, were sent to get slaughtered like cannon food or for, uh, for his invasion. He really does not give a damn, you know, about loss of, of life. Uh, of some of these peasants that he sends into Ukraine, he couldn't care less. If you think that's going to be changing simply because it's a it's a uh, it's shot by this, uh, someone with a different flag, you haven't been following the news much. But this is the argument: No, we cannot do this because if not, uh, that would start World War Three. Because it, it he would see that it was an American pilot or it was uh, someone from NATO. This is something different. Now, you're not talking about not only not providing the, the, the air support so as to have a, a no-fly zone. And this would be perfectly... I mean, if you look at it from, from a... If you try to look at it in, in a legal point of view, this is a country, uh, a sovereign country, Ukraine. The president of said sovereign country is inviting over another sovereign country to, you know, participate in 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 a military exercise like Putin would put him put it himself and you know grounding all air forces no one can fly and that's the decision of a sovereign state like Ukraine um, why is it that you even have to consider the feels of uh, Blamer Putin who is specifically clearly displaying uh, no shits giving regarding anything oh because he would launch nukes well no he probably would not he most likely would not but you know what? It really um, just goes to show how there's so many layers here. O on one hand, you have the ambitions of, of a power-hungry man like Vladimir Putin. On the other hand, you have a, a, a nation like the United States that th this idea that we're the stewards of peace and demo the, uh, democracy and the Western civilized society. Uh, not so much. No, not really. If you are the, if you're the shepherd of, of the, of the civilized countries, then you just don't, you know, look the other way when one of your sheep is being slaughtered by the wolves. You you do something about it. This is just, yeah. You know, well, it's just one sheep that I'm losing. Hope it's not more of them, man. Because if not, that would kind of suck. But you don't plan on doing anything about it. Not only are you not planning on. Um, on providing that, you know, like, like uh, Boris Johnson said, no, that would be a red line we're not willing to cross. Okay, but you're not willing to let the guys have their own planes to fight it themselves either. So you're not really providing any kind of assistance. What you are doing uh, is trying to save face in, in, in something that is a, um, a public humiliation. 
Uh, and this is where all of these sanctions that never works, they don't do anything. They've been in place before. They've been in place for years already and it really changes nothing. It really doesn't. I mean, sure, I did a video about how you know Coca-Cola and McDonald's is leaving. Is it really going to be damaging people all that much? It's probably even good for their health. This does not mean that the loss of freedom they're, sh they're, they're suffering in hands of a dictator like uh, uh, Vladimir Putin is not a real thing. It very much is. And they're going to be suffering it even worse because that grip that he has on the population as this goes on. Keep in mind, there's people that have family in Ukraine. There's people that have their uh, sons being bombed in Ukraine, calling their parents in Russia and telling them they're, they're being bombed and their parents don't even believe them. And yes, that's what propaganda does. That's what fanatism does. When you're a fanatic and you throw away logic and reason, you believe you know that the sky is is red or purple or whatever your supreme leader is telling you it is. That's how you end up with countries like North Korea, right? Is Russia North Korea today? No, but it's becoming more and more like it every passing hour. Um, so this does not mean that there's not a, a very complex uh, network. You know, it's so many uh, dots that need to be connected. And if you stayed with the, with the video long enough, you know, thank you for your patience. But there's so many things here going on. It's not just the 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 hunger of, of a, a dictator. There's also the interest of nations across Europe that uh, for many years chose to say, you know what, we don't give a damn. Russia will one day attack Ukraine, take half of it, take all of it. We are we will pretend to be shocked. Oh dear God, you know that 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 is terrible. Yeah, but you knew, you saw when they did that already. You saw when they moved into Ukraine in 2014, right? You saw it as well as I did. Yeah, you know, we all saw that, um, and you didn't care. And you kept on buying fuel, and you kept on buying energy from, from Vladimir Putin, nonetheless. You couldn't have given a damn less, right? This is, and, and Donald Trump is not, you know, my favorite guy in the world. There's a ton of things I don't like about him, but doing my best to be as objective as possible, and that's something I really try, I will admit, you know, man, he had a couple moments, specifically, when when he was addressing the the famous clip you probably saw when he was talking to the uh, leaders uh, you know different you know, presidents and leaders of Europe uh, saying hey man you you're in NATO but you're buying energy uh, from uh, from Russia this uh, i mean uh, this puts you in a, in a in a in a in a complicated situation there was also a level of naive thinking uh, a combination of, of greed a combination of being naive even from uh, maybe a background of being people that never saw uh, anything other than developed countries and they thought yeah well Putin is a dictator but he's kind of cool we'll be we'll be buying energy from him while saving face locally with all the, the the green lobby which by the way a lot of that green lobby both in Europe and in the United States is funded by Vladimir Putin in, a, in, in an important manner because it serves his own interests. It makes perfect sense that he's been doing this all along. You have the uh, you have the the uh, elites and the World Economic Forum, and you have these bastards uh, trying to wreck uh, the world so as to um, benefit and, and profit from the pieces left. Uh, but you have. So many interconnected interests uh, at the same time that all of this green energy crap benefits the elite because it's sending money into their pockets. One of the pockets in which this is going directly is no other than Vladimir Putin because while you shut down your own production of local energy, he's being he's benefiting from it. One of the things that, that Trump did was leave a country that was exporting energy, right? They were exporting fuel. Now they have to import it from Russia. You think that was all accidental? It was all a coincidence? Same thing for, for Europe. You know, in, in Europe, it's, we're looking good. We're looking environmentally friendly. You know, and many, many politicians that are, they're just career politicians. The only thing they've known how to do is be yes men for the people on top of them. They're real uh, rulers of, of all of this 
that put these politicians in place and fund them and pay for their campaigns. And you know, we're, we're closing down the evil nuclear plant and we're having a damn windmill that produces crap, but at the same time, we're buying energy from Russia. Um, no, those are not coincidences. No, that just doesn't happen. All of that is being funded by all of these very special interests, the elites, people like Putin that benefit from all of this. And, you know, trying to not, again, not making the video super long. It was uh, a combination of being naive or being shilled for Russia as well. Why not? Shills for Russia. Like you see so many... It's super interesting to see Tucker Carlson and Tulsi Gabbard both agree on, uh, yes, you know, uh, Russia is, is pretty much the victim here. Tucker Carlson even said out loud that he's on the side of Russia and he laughed like, yeah, I am on the side of Russia. Okay, man, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty fucked up to think something like that. Saying that after the invasion is pretty messed up. Um, but this is on one of these other dots that need to be connected is using the war, using the, the tragedy that this is for the people in Ukraine as a weapon to gain political points in the United States against the Democratic Party. You aim your guns, you aim them at the shell of a man that is Joe Biden and shoot down on him and gain points for your own party while uh, pretending that uh, Joe Biden has any kind of control. Uh, Joe Biden is about to send planes. He's about to start World War III. This is so irresponsible. No, he's not. He's not going to be doing anything. He's just going to be sitting, pretending to do something so as to save face in, in, in front of the entire world. The entire world is watching this in shock. People uh, watch this in disbelief. Like, we, we, no, we're really doing nothing. And there's people actually going to Ukraine from all over the world trying to support people are being slaughtered by a blammer Putin. That's how far this has gone. But other than the sanctions, the pretending of sending planes, the, uh, the, the being offended by being asked to have a no-fly zone in Ukraine because they don't want to die, and how dare you bastard, you want me to have a no-fly zone um, and start World War III. All of this it's just about saving face and still trying to pretend to be the steward of the free world and democracy. Then you have this other aspect, which is benefiting people that have a given political ideology. And I really like Russell Brand. I think he does, in general, an excellent job. Now, I've always known that whoever is the editorial or whoever is doing the research for him, or you know, maybe it is part of him himself. He used to be a very uh, left-wing kind of radical, almost left-wing type of guy, and you know, many of the things he says resonate with uh, with with those of us uh, libertarian, conservative-minded. But I was just watching his. We should be very concerned about this. There's a, I think there's another one. You've been lied about this, and he has. <laughs> you, know, you have Joe Biden there. And you have Joe Biden, yes, because uh, I'm not going to be dying for Ukraine that being bribed. Ukraine is bribing Joe Biden. No, you don't understand how this works. You don't understand how countries in the second or third world works. You're not bribing Joe Biden. Joe Biden is the one that is using you for his own bribes. He's giving you money and saying, okay, I'm giving you this. This is my cut and it better come back to me. You know, I don't know. Buy one of my stupid son's paintings or put him as head of some bullshit. But this is my cut. I'm getting and giving you these bucks and you better do this. And that's how it, it works in, in a relationship of disparity of power. When you are the most powerful person, country in the world, or apparently uh, pretend to be the most powerful country in the world, apparently right now it's Russia and China, that would be these guys are running things, but if you are as powerful as the United States is, in spite of everything going on, and you are little Ukraine, you do what the, you know, the, the big fish obeys the little one. So, the idea that Ukraine was bribing uh, Joe Biden and, and Joe Biden is going to be sending support to Ukraine. Because it, it simply means you don't understand how this works. And I was watching this video from Russell Brand, which, again, most of the time I, I really like the, the content he makes uh, but or that his people make. Uh, but he had um, 
he, he was using uh he usually goes with pretty left wing left leaning found his way. you know he uses the guardian i use the guardian as a source as well but i i try to be as objective as possible regarding the content of, of that article uh, there's one that he has from man i wish i would have it here it's from this one, it's the sources. The, the nice thing is that he does leave the sources he's using. So Jacobin, source, uh, US back, far right led revolution. The far right. If you think that there's anything far right in Europe, man, let me tell you, for you guys that don't know this, anything that is labeled as far right in Europe, it's probably barely right at all. So Jacobin would be one. This other source that he uses, fair. Do you know what FAIR is? H have you ever read anything from FAIR? FAIR is a ideological communist far left wing outlet. FAIR, when FAIR tries to make excuses for Vladimir Putin, it's simply because they align with this far left communist ideology. Um, you know, look, look it up yourself. Look at who is running fear look at the owners of fear the people that are behind fear you're talking about radical left wing nut cases that will support putin but they will also support nicolas maduro in venezuela and this is a, a test well, this is a little test that we do in argentina is nicolas maduro a dictator if you are not able of admitting that Nicolás Maduro is a dictator, then there's nothing else that comes out of that hole you have in your stupid face that I care to listen. If you cannot accept that Nicolás Maduro is a dictator and that the world would be better off without him and that if anyone is willing to invest in you know, getting rid of him and supporting a, a, a coup to get rid of him, by all means, do the world a favor and invest that money well because it's going to be doing a favor to the people in Venezuela. It's not that, oh, it's a coup. We want to get rid out of, uh, they want to get rid of their leader. Yeah, sometimes you have a damn dictator in your country, like in the case of Venezuela, like in the case of Russia as well. Yes. You know, Vladimir Putin is a dictator. If people could get rid of him, that would benefit the country greatly. So the people of fear, uh, they have a very clear ideology. Even Tulsi Gabbard is the kind of Tulsi Gabbard is the kind of politician that many things that she says I actually like. But she's also the kind of politician that fails the Argentine test of saying yes, that is a damn dictatorship. He needs to be removed. There's no freedom in Venezuela. Tulsi Gabbard, even though... Tulsi Gabbard is pretty anti-gun in her position, even though now she's trying to flirt a little bit with, with, with the Republican Party, but she's a true Bernie Sanders uh, supporter. Bernie Sanders, you know where he stands, and you know where she stands as well when uh, she's denouncing that Ukrainians are uh, only want to kill Russians. Well, yes, lady. I mean, you you were military. You serve. You don't see that a country that's being invaded by a foreign force wants to defend itself. Um, why is it that you're so concerned about Russians being killed and not about the people in Ukraine being slaughtered? So this is where the, the far left ideological communist pro dictatorship type of of politician comes together with your. Tucker Carlson kind of Republican uh, talking head. It is very interesting to see, but, you know, all of these interests, you know, trying to save face, and at the same time, all of this is serving very, very well the people that are bringing this to you. Because one of the things you are is suffering right now, and it's going to be getting a lot worse, is inflation. The inflation is... Uh, is it something that was the elite created the world at war in Ukraine so as to justify inflation? No. But again, if you connect the dots, there's so many dots. And the web, if you connect one and the other and you start throwing lines, you end up with a huge spider web. So this is where some things are very simple, some things are very complex. Now you have inflation. Why? Because of energy and because of Vladimir Putin. Look at Putin and hate him. He's responsible? No. He's a horrible monster that needs to be shot in the head, but he's not responsible for the inflation that you're suffering right now. The inflation that you're suffering right now all over the world is because of the insane spending by the elite these last couple of years of the topic that we cannot even barely talk about. But the inflation was already there. Now, 
Don't let a crisis go to waste. If you have a, 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 a dictator like Putin slaughtering people and I'm going to be pretending to give a damn about it, I'm going to be putting these economic tensions that will not do anything, but in theory are wrecking the economy. That's why you're damn poor right now. That's why gas is going through the roof. Yeah, it's all Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin is a monster. He is a... Uh, 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 something that deserves all the hate and he should be brought down like the animal that he is. But he's not responsible for the inflation that you're suffering now, right now. Not really in, in, a, in a true extent. Sure, part of it, yeah, a little bit, tiny little bit responsible, Vladimir Putin. Okay, let's go with that. Uh, but it's just a crisis, you know, not going to waste. We're using this for the excuse of the inflation that we already created. If it hadn't been this, it, it, it haven't been that, um, and you know what? Honestly, bottom of my heart, I don't think that we, this was carefully orchestrated between elements in the elite uh, that benefit from uh, uh, the, the the pharmaceuticals and you know orchestrating this with uh, Blamer Putin. Okay, wait a little bit. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. You know, now that I'm even saying it, maybe it was like you know what? You're planning on invading. Give us a little bit more time, and, and, and then we'll say that this is all just because of you. Okay, let, let's go with that. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but I'm more leaning towards the, a crisis. We have this going on. Let's just not let it go to waste. Let's pretend we're doing something about it. Let's pretend we're doing these sanctions that uh, freedom has its price, man. You know, so you're going to be poor now because we're fighting for freedom in Ukraine. You're not fighting for freedom in Ukraine. You're not helping Ukraine in anything at all, as Boris Johnson so accurately explained right here. He's not going to be, you know, not intervening in any way. And these sanctions are not doing anything. People are still going to be getting, are still getting slaughtered till this day. The sanctions have already been in place years ago. And this one is going to be super tough, man. Where are all the damn oligarchs, by the way? Aren't they all in London? Aren't they all in, 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 in Britain? Russian oligarchs have always been in, always uh, chose uh, Britain as their, their home. We're doing these sanctions on all the oligarchs. All of them? Really? How many? How much sanctions? How much are you hitting their pocket? Are, are they in jail uh, as war criminals for aiding a war criminal? Or are they just, you know, the owner of, of Chelsea? Is, is he behind bars? Right? No, we, we took his assets. Oh, really? All of them? He's, he, no. And this is also going into the interest of, of Russia from a, a very long time ago. So probably, it's not just probably, there's actually quite a bit of proof about this. Putin financing all of the green movement and all the crap that he could possibly finance in Europe, in the United States, of course. Actually, talking about UK, there's a lot of money that was from these uh, Russian oligarchs going into Brexit. I mean, you hate Brexit. You 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 hate the European Union. You've been told by the mainstream media that you have to hate the European Union because it's a horrible dictatorship. It's a horrible dictatorship which you can actually leave, like UK did, you know, not that long ago. Uh, but who benefited in a great degree from? UK leaving the European Union, of course, Vladimir Putin pumped millions and millions of, uh, of pounds into that campaign. And there was also the elite that was benefiting from this, which, you know what, we're going to be making a, uh, Rupert Murdoch did a, you know, how many hundreds of millions of pounds did he make with Brexit? I don't know. If you care, look into it. But the idea that this was just all about a, a few proud fishermen that just wanted... The same fishermen that were supporting Brexit were later crying that they had their stuff rotten in their boats. So the fishermen did not benefit from it. The NHS certainly did not benefit from it. But Putin definitely benefited from it. The elite that saw their fortune multiply uh, as their assets are being protected from further scrutiny uh, from some of those prying uh, commies in the European Union definitely liked it. But this is what I mean. This is super complex. It doesn't mean that it's any less evil than it is. The slaughtering of the people in Ukraine is terrible. Unfortunately, Ukraine is on its own. And everything you see... European Union, the United States, 
and you see Britain pretending to give a fuck about it, it's all just bullshit. Guys, but this is still going to be affecting you. This is going to be used probably as an excuse for something that was already, already going to be hitting your pocket, but... Worried about inflation, you definitely want to get the Marshall Survival Manual, Surviving the Economic Collapse, where I explain pretty much how the inflation and what you're seeing right now is nothing. You know, get your um, angers peppered, as the saying goes, because this is just the beginning. Uh, the economic impact of everything that's been done these last couple of years, it is going to be terrible. And a little bit is even made worse because of the war in Ukraine and because of, of Putin. But these sanctions are just the perfect excuse for the inflation that was already in place. And get yourself uh, bugging out and relocating. A lot of you folks are going to be needing this for sure. Probably if you had this uh, and you were in, in Ukraine, you, you may have left already. That would have been the advice you got from this book as someone living in Ukraine, giving everything going on, and street survival skills. Guys, these are my books. You have those available below if you like uh, modern survivalism and practical preparedness. See you in our next video, guys. Take care.